Today we're here with Oscar from Elmo Racing and we're going to be yeah. talking about the essentially all billet RP968 engine here. Now this is a 1500 horsepower rated engine, um, we've got billet pretty much everything. Uh, so to start out yeah. with Oscar, how much of this is actually the same as a, a real 968 engine? Yeah. Well, it, it depends on who you ask. If you ask the sort of guys who are who are doing the rules that it has to be based off a stock engine, then it's basically a stock engine. Because we, we're running, I mean you can put a stock uh, crankshaft in it there are no rods and pistons available for that but I mean you can put it in and it will turn around so it's it, it's basically compatible with that and it has uh, stock main bearings and the uh, key at the end of the crankshaft for the pulleys that's also stock course part so so yeah but otherwise it's completely billet yeah it's basically a stock engine <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much so the displacement of this engine is obviously a lot larger than stock how have you gone about managing that whilst keeping the standard bore space the bore spacing is, is uh, stock on this also. That's uh, one of the things on the uh, 944 and 968 engine that, that they have. They have a quite large cooling gap between the cylinders, so we've used that to just push up the bore really the maximum amount. I mean, there's still maybe 0.75 millimeters, we could push it further, but it's a little bit on the conservative side doing a 4 liter, liter version. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That allowed us also obviously to do a much larger combustion chamber and, and larger valves also. and. We reworked the intake and exhaust side to have more space for the turbo plumbing and everything because the stock engine isn't the turbo one. So yeah, so we swapped that around and the valve, valve angles are changed to get a more compact combustion chamber and it's pretty much yeah designed a lot from from scratch up basically. You said most of this engine is billet. Could you just give us a rundown? Because I think most of the viewers would appreciate a list of what is billet on this engine. Okay, yeah, um, if we start from the top, we have a billet valve cover, we have a billet uh, caps for the uh, cam bearings, we have a billet cylinder head. Um, the uh, valves, they're not billet, they're um, aftermarket, but I mean, upgraded specs obviously and, and custom sizes and everything. Um, there have uh, billet uh, pistons, billet connecting rods, uh, billet engine block, uh, the girdle is billet, the crankshaft is billet, um, the, we have a, a service cover underneath so we can uh, get the connecting rods and pistons out with the engine the car. The cover for that is also billet. We have the ducting for the dry sump oil pump that's also billet and the cover plating for that is also billet. And uh, yeah the oil pump is an aftermarket one. They pretty much machine the parts so you could maybe class that also as a billet but yeah it's pretty much billet. It, for low quantity and really I mean to use the, the high strength aluminum you really want to have billet parts because then you don't need to use the cast type aluminum so you can use stronger stuff and it, it yeah it pays off. While we're on the subject of aluminum I'd like to quickly talk about the quick drop con rods and pistons. Now my understanding is you get about 500 k's on a set of these yeah, yeah, these are, um, well, I mean, there are custom uh, ordered for specific this engines, or they're not uh, from some other engine, but they are um, pretty close to sort of uh, aftermarket uh, aluminum rods, and they have, uh, they're made for, for the really high RPM, high power stuff, it starts eating on, on their uh, <laughs> lifetime, so they're made for drag racing mostly, but for uh, this sort of uh, extreme cylinder level, cylinder horsepower levels, they, I mean, you really need that to prevent the, the connecting rod from buckling so that starts eating at, at the at the sort of lifetime so yeah there yeah you're limited on the amount of laps you can do with those now you said it was a quick drop but how long does it take to change a piston and con rod out it's it's pretty much depending on the team you, you have to get the cylinder head off to get the pistons out so so that's going to take a, take a while but we have a complete o-ring system on this so you don't need any uh, any sealant or anything between those and you never have any drawing oh, time on that um, there, there is a MLS head gasket but we run um, for the valve cover and everything we have o-ring sealing on those so there's no silicone needed and you don't need to fiddle around with these with these um, half half um, moon type type gasket things or something and yeah just a plain round o-ring in, in a groove and you can put everything together and so it is possible to do it very quickly with this all billet construction we're getting to about 1500 horsepower what would you say is the advantage of going for something like this over something like say a twin turbo ls 
much. They are. I mean, you can get the, the crate engine from the US, the V8, that can make a thousand five hundred horsepower. That's nothing special. Well, I mean, special and special. I mean, it's, it's I mean, nothing bad about that. But I mean, uh, nothing sort of um, like really new or state of the art. And the thing that we're bringing with this is the weight, because for circuit racing, the, especially when you have high downforce levels, the weight of the car is so so important for the lap time. And that's something I think that that most people or teams don't really realize that that the weight is so critical for the for the cornering speeds and the lap times and that's where you're making the lap time and this is why we've done this to get the weight as low as possible on this we have the uh, without the intake and exhaust manifolds the raw engine with oil pump is around 106 kilograms so that's really uh, really a lot lighter than a V8 yeah yeah I saw some photos that it's an open deck design yeah, it's um, uh, it depends a little bit on on how you define it. It's but I mean, yeah, we don't run these uh, deck heights because the cooling on this is very critical. Also, I don't really like the sort of closed type deck. I mean, it's not a closed deck, but it's not really an open deck either. It's like a, our own custom design. We have sort of strengthening ribs inside of the cooling ducting, and we have a sort of turbulence model to get the cooling to the. And, yeah. Oh, so is it fully CFD designed for? cooling flows within the block. We haven't done CFD on the cooling stuff, but it's, um, um, it's um, yeah, we have done uh, quite a lot of analysis on what sort of a size the sort of cooling parts need to be to get a sort of stable vortices inside of them to, to get the cooling distributed evenly. And we, we have looked into that a little bit and we haven't run into any problems so far, so we haven't like started on the CFD part of that, but. <laughs> Are there any other special features of the engine that we haven't really talked about? The crankshaft is, is quite special. We run um, piston guided connecting rods, so that's allowed us to get a really a, quite a lot of weight off the, the crankshaft. So that, that helps a lot. We run um, on the piston pins on the crankshaft. There are no no guide areas at all, and uh, we have a really smooth shape around that. We have a yeah, video running on that. So. But that's maybe one of the things that have allowed to get a lot of mass out of the rotational assembly and, and also reduce the weight of the whole package. What sort of max RPM would you say this thing is good for? The, the team, the RP968 team wanted to run it at 8,500 and it's definitely good for that. We're um, looking at maybe 10,000 RPM. We're going to have to see how it behaves and how the sort of lifetime of the connecting rods is going to be affected with. I mean, the higher the RPM goes, then the shorter the lifetime is going to be. So we're going to have to see. And, and we might end up making our own custom connecting rods for that. We have a, a, a aftermarket manufacturer for, for those at the moment. But I mean, so far we've been happy with them. So no reason to switch those out yet. But And so just so we can get an idea, What's the sort of price on an item like this? We, we only have a price for a complete engine. That would be with uh, turbo intake manifold, uh, exhaust manifold, uh, ECU fully mapped and ready to drop in. We have a price range for jet that is around 120,000 euros. And yeah, I'm not even sure. That might be a little bit on the low end because the weight on this is so special, but we have no idea what the market is. So this is like a initial sort of, yeah, special offering sort of to start with. But I mean, obviously, we're very happy to supply the, the engine without intake and exhaust and without the mapping and everything. And then obviously the price drops dramatically with that. So, I mean, it's a negotiation depending on what the teams want and we're happy to discuss from those. Well, thanks, Oscar. Thanks for chatting to us today. Good luck with sales and the engine. Hopefully we get to see more things running crazy power plants like this soon. Yeah, happy to talk, talk with you about these.